Trying to build a gaming PC, but the crypto miners have you down? Are you outraged by GPU retail prices? Well, I tried my hand at a solution for just $145. Don't try this one at home, folks. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Like most of you, I'm getting a bit fed up with the current market for graphics cards. In my ever-expanding quest to come up with a solution, I thought back to my average gamer's PC with the GTX 760 and thought, that card on eBay right now is only $75. And if I had two of them, I could SLI them. That should give me near GTX 780 power or better for around $140. So that's exactly what I did. But what system do I test them in? Well, the Biang X79 motherboard that I had previously used for that build claimed it supported SLI, but every reference I found actually says contrary to that. So I decided to take CPU bottlenecking out of the equation entirely. Today's test bench is a Gigabyte Z370 XP SLI motherboard with an i7-8700K. It's running at its stock speeds, as I'm still undecided on a cooling solution, and it's still running with a 240mm Asatec AIO at the moment. It's fine for these purposes, but it's not a great system for overclocking. Alongside the CPU is 16GB of Corsair Vengeance running at 3200MHz and a 500GB Samsung 850 EVO SSD. Now before we even get into the benchmarks, I'm going to tell you, I don't recommend the solution for everyone. Not only are you running SLI, which inherently brings some problems with games, compatibility issues, if it's even supported at all, but these are 220 watt TDP cards. At full tilt, the system is drawing in excess of 550 watts of power. Now the 600 watt Enermax power supply I have is up to the task, but at $80, it's about the cheapest one out there that is. Now, normally at this point in the video, I'd do a sexy B-roll and benchmarking montage, but each test kind of has its own talking point here, so you'll have to listen to me for a while longer, but I will go ahead and throw some B-roll over the top so you don't have to look at me anymore. Starting out with a couple of synthetics, 3D Mark Firestrike shows some scaling with SLI, but it's not the difference that I was expecting with a dual card setup. In this case, there was an improvement, but SLI ran just 72% faster than a single card setup did. In my experience, 3D Mark actually usually scales better, so I'm not sure what was going on here. I mean, 72% is nothing to scoff at, but it's not the doubling that I was expecting. TimeSpy gives me the results that I had hoped to see in the Firestrike test. There's a 93% performance improvement from the single card to the SLI setup, but will this translate into actual real-world gaming? I started off my games testing with Borderlands 2. Now, yes, it is an older title, but it was released around the same time as the GTX 760, launching just three months prior. At very high settings, it managed nearly 120 FPS on average with a single card, and with 0.1% lows, that stayed well above 60 FPS. Certainly not bad for a card that originally sold for $250 at its release. Adding a second card to the mix gave me some pretty impressive results. We jumped all the way up to 190 FPS on average, with 1% lows at 107, and even 0.1% lows at 83. That's a 59% improvement in frame times. I ran through the rest of my usual gaming benchmarks, and this is where things start to get a little bit tricky. GTA 5 was another game that showed great improvements between single and dual card setups. The single GTX 760 at high settings gave me 93 FPS on average, with lows of just 72. In SLI, we see the average improve up to 138 FPS, or an improvement of nearly 49%. The lows are nearly equal here though, with drops down to about 73 frames per second in both tests. This game also highlights one of the main weaknesses of this particular setup. These cards only have 2GB of GDDR5, which by modern standards is starting to come up a bit short. There are 4GB GTX 760s out there, and with one of those you could likely get some higher settings out of GTA 5. As it was though, I was stuck with using normal textures, as bumping up to high would have required at least 3GB of video memory, and there's very high textures available for this as well which require even more. Moving on to Doom, it's another title that likely suffers from a lack of video memory on these cards. With a single card, I was only able to hit 60 FPS with the graphical setting at medium presets, and the lows still dropped below 20 at times. Not a terrible experience, but these drops are noticeable in the gameplay. And we also see our first example of why SLI is typically not recommended. Doom completely ignores the second graphics card, scoring identically in both tests. Fallout 4 is a title that's not benchmarked often because it's capped at 60 frames per second, and I knew I could likely average that at high settings with a single card, and that's exactly what I got, and with reasonable lows of just 33. But I wanted to see if adding a second card could improve the lows. In fact, SLI did just the opposite, dropping our 1% lows from 50 down to 45, and the 0.1% lows from 33 to 23. Not a good result, and a title I would disable SLI for. Rocket League shows numbers very similar to GTA 5, with very good scaling and improvements all around. The average FPS of 81 improved 49% to 121. 
low show slight bumps as well, from 55 to 67 frames per second. The gameplay here was quite good, but the difference wasn't dramatic enough for me to recommend you going out and buying a second card to make this game playable. And rounding this out here is CSGO. A single GTX 760 managed 102 FPS on average, with SLI configuration jumping all the way up to 255. No, no, no wait. Th those numbers are backwards. Yeah, we actually saw a 60% drop in frame rates from a single card to an SLI setup. A single GTX 760 absolutely rocked this game, with an average of 255 frames per second with a 0.1% low of just 90. Moving over to SLI, we see the average drop all the way down to 102 FPS, with the 0.1% low all the way down into the high 20s. Not a good look, and this is a game that really muddies the water for this video. So how do I call this one? If you're looking for a cheap GPU option that can get you gaming on modern titles, I suggest you look elsewhere. Sure, I'm only into these two GPUs about $145, but I still need an SLI capable motherboard and a power supply of at least 600 watts, and I'd actually recommend 750 or 800 watts. And if I'm spending $145 on GPUs, that's GTX 770 or 780 money, which is guaranteed to get me better performance in titles that are not SLI supported. The power draw and the heat from the system alone knock it down quite a few places on my list. It's loud, it's hot, it's power hungry, and it actually performs worse than a GTX 1050 if SLI is not supported by your name title. The games that does have enough horsepower to run, it lacks enough video memory to crank the settings higher on. Time Spy and GTA 5, in fact, both gave me warnings about the potential for low video memory. If you have $150 and you absolutely need to buy a graphics card today, I would recommend scoring a GTX 770 4GB. They're a single GPU, which means you're not going to run into SLI compatibility issues, and on average they're about 28% faster than a 1050 Ti. I've been seeing them for sale on the used market for between $120 and $200, however your mileage may vary depending on where you live. You can also start looking for a GTX 780 or 780 Ti starting at that $200 price point. So good luck to you, and let me know down in the comments how you're surviving the GPU price hikes. I'm curious if you've purchased a graphics card at the current prices, or if you've scored deals on used hardware. Be sure to like this video, and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Follow me on Twitter, and make sure to check out my Patreon if you're interested in supporting this channel. Every dollar earned there is going right back into content for this channel. You also get access to my Discord server. You can chat with myself, as well as the rest of the crew from Talking Heads live shows throughout the week. Also, if you have any shopping to do, make sure to click on my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description. Same deal, every dollar goes right back into content. As always, thank each and every one of you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Hey, hey, Dyson. Yeah, Jeff over at Craft Computing. Yeah, so I see you guys have been doing a lot of uh, TechTube advertisements lately. I was wondering if... Jeff. Yeah, yeah, Jeff. Uh, Craft Computing. I I'm on YouTube. Okay, yeah, hey, I was wondering if you would be... Hello? Bissell, hey, hey, it's Jeff over at Craft Computing. Yeah, I was wondering if you'd be... Jeff. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, Craft Computing. Yeah, so I was wondering if you guys would be interested in doing an advertisement on my channel. Uh... Look, uh, I've, I've got a lot of dust I can clean up and craft computing. I want to say I'm a great fan of your guys' displays. LG makes just some top-notch products, but I hear you also make some vacuums. Uh, I was wondering if you'd be interested in... Jeff. So what I'm thinking is you guys send over one of your vacuums. I can do a piece on vacuuming up my studio, and uh, you know I built this $275 desk lately. I, I generated a lot of dust doing that. I could really... Yeah. Well, well, you have my number. Thank you.